Over the course of the past few sessions, I've been pointing both of my telescopes at the same targets at the same time in order to try and draw a conclusion and a comparison between the two. I've got a question that I personally have been asking myself, and that is, do I want to start imaging the night sky at a finer sampling ratio as reflected by the image on the right? So I'm going to tell you what we're looking at straight away, and I want to know your opinion too. It really is valuable to me as to which you'd rather see more of. So over on the left, we're looking at the Celestron Rasa 11 paired with the Play 1. Poseidon C Pro, giving us a pixel scale of 1.25 arc seconds per pixel. So not coarse by any means, but certainly could be finer. To that end, the image on the right is the Skywatcher Quattro 8 inch, paired up with the Player 1 Uranus C Pro, giving me a pixel scale in that case of 0.75 arc seconds per pixel. So quite fine. I've tried to keep everything as fair as I possibly could. The data that we're going to be looking at is simply processed with STF, so screen transfer function uh, stretching. And then I'm going to apply in stages, blur exterminator and then noise exterminator on top of that. And we'll take a look at how the data changes, how it behaves at those two different sampling ratios from two different rigs. And uh, from that, we can maybe start to draw some conclusions. Nothing concrete, of course, due to the massive differences between the two but all the same let's have a little bit of fun so straight away i think it's obvious that the image on the right has more detail natively the stars are smaller so it's done a better job uh, in fact it looks like you would think that i'd missed focus ever so slightly on the rasa but i haven't uh, it is nailed down is that focusing routine i think it's just been affected slightly more by the scene owing to its larger aperture physically looking through a bigger column of air and also a slight limitation i think of the roackman schmidt astrograph design it can't ever really truly be quite as sharp as simply a newtonian can over on the right but it can certainly be plenty sharp so this is just the data in its base form and the win in this case in terms of sharpness goes to the quattro on the right so now let's open up that same data this time with Blur Exterminator applied in both cases. So first of all, let's take a look at the left image, the Rasa. I'll undo Blur Exterminator and redo. You can see if I just do this a couple of times for you, undo and redo, the difference is pretty dramatic in terms of that. So it's doing a great job deconvolving that data. Um, highly recommended tools and I do have affiliate links for them and all that lot. And if you use them, it massively helps me out, but that's not what I'm trying to get out with this. Um, interestingly, with Blur Exterminator turned off on the Quattro and on on the Rasa, the sharpness between them is pretty close. So the starting point of the Quattro data is seemingly a lot sharper, as we've uh, noted before. So when I apply it, huge difference really huge difference so the better the data going in you guessed it the better data comes out um really notable differences between the two there and i think if i just zoom in a little bit more and we can try and really illustrate that for a moment so i'll just undo once more and redo on that rasa data a few times as you can see the deconvolution is working amazingly well but not nearly as well as it does on that already sharper Quattro data. So let's take this one step further now where we're going to apply as well Noise Exterminator on top of Blur Exterminator. This is data that's again still completely unprocessed. It's just stretched with screen transfer function and nothing else. So let's undo Noise Exterminator. Quite noisy. And redo. Really nice smooth background as you would expect it's a wonderful tool but the interesting thing about this i think is that even though traditionally you really would always want to go for the faster telescope where possible where a signal to noise ratio is concerned i should clarify the actual end results these days between an f4 telescope and an f2.2 telescope not that dramatically different thanks to uh, the power of these processing tools that we have uh, at our disposal these days now if i just zoom in a little bit more like we did on that last comparison before we move away from this galaxy image i've got a nebula image coming up for you afterwards made with a dual narrowband filter so before and after you can really see that noise quality improving and the before and after 
arguably the improvement I think is even stronger on the Quattro due to that finer kind of scale that we're looking at of the noise itself uh, it gets smoothed out that just that bit better I can certainly see smaller details starting to appear and also some other evidence of higher resolution such as in the Quattro image these two stars right here cleanly able to be separated rather than on the uh, raster image they are kind of merged into one elongation very interesting to know I think now next up we have some Sol Nebula data again gathered on the same night at the same time in this case both for the exact amount of time so let's take a look at just the common area uh, as of course the field of view of the Rasa is much larger and we're going to take a look at this little formation over on the uh, the left hand side of that whirling dervish right there so in both cases let's try and get this roughly matched as we can on screen this is just data with uh, screen transfer function applied and nothing else the sharpness difference again is there straight away I think um, it's notably sharper over on that quattro image notably less overall signal to noise ratio too um, but it does have other things going for it such as these regions of dark nebulosity coming up just a little bit darker not sure exactly as to why that that could be but uh, all the same it's an observation now next let's go ahead do the same thing as we did before and apply uh, blur exterminator to both of these images so um, let's just get that field of view kind of matched once again and now I think it's definitely becoming more notable so if we just um, undo and redo a few times on the raster image right there so this is undone blur exterminator redo it's certainly sharpening the nebula along with the stars as you would hope from a deconvolution tool it's doing a really wonderful job over on the right however the quattro image not only are the stars getting you know really markedly sharper but that's kind of same level of sharpness is now being applied to the nebula too because it is starting from a sharper uh, beginning point it seems like you know when it starts off better it, it kind of makes sense that you can push it further in the end um, some more marks of resolution popping up right here so let's just say kind of how we noted before that double star right there it split just on the quattro image it's kind of merged and looking a little bit um, cometary really over on the the rasa another close pair right there like you could park a bus in the gap between them on the quattro almost a little bit merged over on the raster and once again just real quick an undo and a redo on bxt on both of these you see the effect it's having really interesting to see i think at least and now finally that same end test so we're going to be looking in this case that same region i think was a good little test spot and now we're applying noise exterminator on top of blur exterminator and in both cases so let's just take a look at the rasa first undo and redo you can see it's a really wonderful tool um, in terms of how it's getting rid of that noise but the resultant image between the two even though you would expect there to be a much bigger difference going from f2.2 to f4 in terms of noise actually isn't that different i would say both of a very pleasing noise quality by the end both have tons of signal available however clearly once you do remove the last little bit of that noise on this uh, quattro image especially if you pay attention across this end uh region right here the the leading face if you will of this lobe of nebulosity um it's just standing out tons more on the quattro image so again that native sharpness that it has to it is really working in its favor so if we compare the two again uh slightly different area again it's a clear win in terms of resolution for that quattro so i think from this i've been able to answer for myself i would like to start imaging a slightly finer pixel scale um i would be interested as always in hearing what you guys think about this do you think this has been a worthwhile comparison or a complete waste of time it doesn't matter if it has been a waste of time still had some fun and i hope that you had a bit of fun watching uh, me fool around with this now that's about it from me 
And I'm going to leave it right there, guys. I've taken up enough of your time. Thank you, as always, for watching. Thank you for giving your support to everybody that does through Patreon, YouTube memberships, all the things that you guys do. It makes a massive difference to my life. And thank you. That's about it from me. I look forward to seeing you in the next one when hopefully we're going to have some clear skies. Finally. It can't stay cloudy forever. So until then, look after yourselves and clear skies.